The T100 Triathlon World Tour is only a few weeks away. I've been looking back at the past PTO races and have three trends that I'm keeping my eye on this year. Plus a little bonus on one of my favorites to win the men's series. I'm gonna run through each trend, who it may benefit, and who I think could break it this year. Starting with trend number one. The men's winner of each 2023 PTO race swam front pack. Three different winners, all front pack swimmers. Max Newman in Ibiza, Jan Fredino in Milwaukee, and Christian Blumenfeld in Singapore. Now this trend can be extended even further if you look at the other championship races from 2023. Challenge Roth, Ironman 70.3 Worlds, and the Ironman World Championships. All were won by front pack swimmers. So does this mean it's impossible to win a championship level race without being a front pack swimmer? No, but as the strength and depth of athletes swimming in the front pack continues to increase, and more athletes come out of the water together and able to ride together, it's going to be even harder to close those deficits out of the water if you're not making that front pack, especially at these top level races. If you look at the men's athletes the PTO have signed, 10 out of the 20 are front pack swimmers. That means you're going to have half the field coming out of the water together and trying to ride together. Now, that group will split up on the road, but you're still going to have some of the best athletes coming out of the water together with a significant advantage over those weaker swimmers because they can work together on the bike and get an easier ride along the way. So clearly this favors the front pack swimmers, but who could we see break this trend in 2024? For me, there are two big names who aren't always front pack swimmers, but could win a race in 2024. And those are Magnus Ditlev and Jason West the top two ranked athletes in the series. Now, both have swam front pack in the past, Magnus Ditlev when he won Challenge Roth last year, and Jason West in Singapore when the pace probably wasn't as hot as it normally is. But unless they've been really focusing on that over winter and had big improvements, I don't see them regularly making that front pack, so they'll normally be coming from behind. Now, neither has won a PTO race before, but 2024 could be the year that they get their first victory and break this trend of the front pack swimmers winning all these races. Now, I went for a ride earlier today and my bike is currently sitting in the hallway, covered in dirt, and need to make sure it's clean before the roommate comes back. So, let's go outside, get it clean, we can talk more out there. And just as I've said that, it started raining and I don't want to clean my bike in the rain. Sorry, roommate. I'll do it later, it'll be fine. Okay, now for trend number two. Every women's race since 2022 has been won with a top three run split. And if that athlete hasn't come off the bike first, they've had the fastest run of the day. Now, we've seen Haug and Gentle run through the field to take the win. But if you look at the US Open in 2023, Taylor Nibb still had to run the third fastest split of the day to secure the win and hold off Ashley Gentle. The running in triathlon is now at such a high level that it's becoming near impossible to win a race on the bike without backing it up with one of the day's best runs. We saw at the PTO races in 2022, athletes ride off the front and get caught by Ashley Gentle. The speed that these athletes have over the 18 kilometers is absurd. So will every race just be won by one of these out and out runners? Not necessarily. Now for someone to break this trend, they need a healthy lead off the bike. So you're probably thinking Charles Barkley, Nib, maybe Daniela Reef. For Charles Barkley and Nib, they can run those top three run splits but they may be in a position where they don't need to. Both can swim off the front of the race and build a lead in the swim, and then increase that on the bike, riding two or three minutes into the rest of the field. And they may not be in a position where they need that top three run split, but they'll still run top five or top eight. Now for Daniela Reef, she definitely need a bigger gap off the bike, but it's becoming increasingly difficult to know how she's gonna perform race to race. And we've seen her last season with highs and lows throughout the year. So we're not quite sure which version of her we're gonna get in the T100 World Tour. But she would definitely need a big lead off the bike to hold off How, Gentle, Philip, Sodaro, Kat Matthews, Emma Pallant-Brown, Tamara Jewett. The level of runners in this series is truly insane. Now, before I talk about that little bonus I promised at the start of the video, we need to talk about trend number three. 
the PTO races got less competitive throughout the 2023 season. Now, how I'm judging this is the number of athletes, including the winner, that finished within two and a half percent of that winning time. So for PTO races, that's roughly five minutes. Now, why is this important? For me, exciting and dramatic racing, you want as many athletes battling it out all the way to the line at the front of the race. So for me, athletes finishing within that five minute mark, the more you see, the more dramatic, the more intense the racing all the way to the line. What you don't want to see is when it's clear who's going to be on the podium halfway through the run, and then it's just a procession to the finish. The closer the racing is, the more exciting all the way to the line. Okay, so going back to these numbers. For the men, they had nine athletes at the European Open finishing within that two and a half percent. And again, that includes the winner. Then at the US Open, they had seven. And in Singapore, it was only three. Now the women didn't drop off like that, but it was never that high. At the European Open, they had four. US Open, they had three. And then in Singapore, they had three again. So across the season, the races got less tight and less competitive especially for the men with that big drop off. Now this could be for several reasons. The Asian Open definitely had a weaker field. Specifically, it wasn't as deep as the European Open and the US Open, but it was also the first race with only 20 athletes. Less athletes, generally bigger gaps will form between them, making everyone become spread out so it's not as condensed at the front of the race. And a quarter of them DNF'd, which increased the gaps even further. So it'll be interesting to see more races with 20 athletes this year and how that affects the race dynamics because we've only seen it once so far. Now for the women, we never saw the top athletes racing consistently against each other. We had Haug versus Gentle twice, Gentle versus Nib once, but we never had those three winners battling it out all in the same race. Then you look at the other top athletes, Kat Matthews only raced once, same with Daniela Reef. Laura Phillip didn't even race, Emma Palin Brown once, Chelsea Doro twice, but she was off in the European Open. This year, they'll be battling it out multiple times throughout the year, and I really think that's gonna increase the competitiveness all the way to the finish line for the women's racing. Now it's time for the bonus I promised you at the start of the video. This athlete is my favorite to win the men's series, and we could see him setting some serious records on the run. That's right, it's Jason West. He is the best runner in the field and currently has three of the top five run splits since the PTO Tour started in 2022. In his first four PTO races, his run splits were one hour, 28 seconds, 58 minutes, 54 seconds, 57 minutes and two seconds, and 56 minutes and 22 seconds. Crazy, that progression stepping down, how far could it go? Could we see him break 54 minutes? an average under three minutes per kilometer for that whole 18K run. That would be mad. Let's see what you can do in Miami. It's one of the fastest courses on the circuit and he's had success there before. Thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe. I'll be putting out race previews for all the T100 races this year, starting in March for Miami. I'll be breaking down every athlete, going through the race, swim, bike, run, and making my picks. See you there. Guess I should clean my bike now. Nah, fit tomorrow.